Hello, 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 and today we're talking about how you can make a new Airstool Pro safe to use. Uh, for years, a lot of the old school home brewers have said that you need to prepare uh, any new equipment with uh, vinegar, simply so that way you can get rid of any things that have been left behind from the manufacturing process. And finally, Steel Spirits and their starter guide state the same thing. Now, I'm going to be deviating away from what they've said in their, their, their guide solely because we've got tried and tested ways of doing it. Um, but uh, it will make it a lot, lot cleaner for you, a lot safer. So, it's very quick, very easy. What you need to do is just move this out of the way for a minute. You need to get all your different packing out of there still, and then you can put the all the different parts in here, including the two nozzles. Um, now, annoyingly, the the uh, still, uh, Air Steel Pro doesn't come with ceramic boil enhancers. I don't know why, because you need them. Um, so either take them from uh, another still you've got, like a T500 or Air Steel, or you can buy some. They are very useful. So lay them all out like this, and that way you've got them individual areas. And what we're going to do to clean them is we're going to be using table salt and some citric acid. For the actual um, Airstool Pro itself, we're going to be using white vinegar, but we'll do that in a minute. Now, outside of these ingredients, what you're going to need is a mixing container for putting in table salt and citric acid, and then some containers or jugs, whatever, for putting the things in. So what I recommend is you can put you can put them individual ones or all together, it's just up to you. The problem is if you put them all in one container, you've then got to try and separate it and you're just picking them out for a while. So I will put, oops, a bit loud, the ceramic boiler harnesses and the copper packing into one container. I will then put the stainless steel packing into another one. without trying to get it everywhere. I will then put the, the, the two nozzles, the pot still and the reflux, the um, infusion basket and the two glass collection containers into another one. And then in here, now how much table salt and citric acid is up to debate? Uh, a lot of people say one tablespoon of each to 500 mils of water. Other people will say two. I tend to do about one and a half, but it doesn't really matter too much because uh, say it's all up to debate. And what you're also going to want to do is you'll want to use warm water with this because it will help dissolve it a lot quicker. Just the same thing as if this was sugar. So put in your about one and a half spoons of table salt. And this is just straight and ordinary table salt. And then do the same thing with citric acid. They don't need to be heaped. Yeah, that's about right. And then add your warm water. Now I'm going to put the tap on, so it's cold at the moment. Now outside of this, it's just basically stirring it until it all dissolves. And then you can pour this solution into your jugs until it's gone over the surface. And you'll want to leave that in there for for about an hour, two hours. Um, you don't want to leave it in there too long and start leaving a, a surface or anything like that. Well, it's starting to get warm now. And then saying is add 500 mils of water or thereabouts. and then stirring. And this might take a few minutes to dissolve everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video now and then I'll come back once it's all dissolved. Right, so this is all dissolved now. Uh, it's all clear and it looks just like water. So it is literally just as simple as pouring it in. And so you just want to cover. Oh, done a bit more there. There we go, 
I need to tip a little bit more from these into this one because the basket isn't being fully covered. And then once you've done that, you can just give them a bit of a stir. And what I'd recommend is leave them for four, five, ten minutes and then just give it again, just a little bit of a stir just to make sure that any oxygen that's in there is being moved around as well as everything's getting in full contact. Obviously you need to be a bit more gentle with this one because it's got the glass in there. That's it. So, 10 minutes, I'm going to give it a bit of a stir, do that two or three times over the next two hours. Um, but say it doesn't really matter if you're doing this for one hour to two hours, is again, it varies depending on what people think, but uh, I'll do around about the two hours. Now outside of this, We'll just put this over here. The next thing we need to do is make our solution for the actual uh, air still itself, the air still pro. So, what you want to do here is still spirits recommend using 500 mils of the white vinegar and 500 mils of uh, water or hot water. Uh, that's fine. I'm going to be doing probably um, 750 mils of each simply just because. I buy them in five litre containers, so I've got more than enough, and I'd rather go over the under. Now this is a very simple thing. of literally, oh, that's strong. Pouring that in. There we go. Now, one thing I would recommend is you do not run this in your house. Um, if you do this in your house and you, when you switch it on, it's going to stink. So if you're able to, do it outside. You will feel a lot better afterwards because otherwise your house will smell very strongly of vinegar. And then say 750 ml of water. Stick this back on. Now you can't run this straight away as it is because one, I need the glass collection and two, I need the pot steel nozzle. So this is now all ready and waiting. After my two hours, I will then take this outside, put the glass connector on there, put the reflux on and we're good to go. Um, but obviously before I do that, you're gonna need to rinse it. So we'll be back in two hours. Oh, right, so what we need to do now is rinse everything off because obviously it's all got citric acid and table salt. Having a colander is great because you can pour it in there. I would rinse out the container first off and make sure that is nice and clean. Let's give it a wipe down. And then once you're happy that is clean, it is just put your hands in, make sure they get plenty of water and soap. And then just take them out. Now, I'll be doing these ones off camera because they'll just take a little bit longer. With the other bits, like the, the containers or the uh, basket, just run it under the tab like this. That is all you need to do. And then with the glass ones, just be a little bit more uh, gentle with them. So that'll be done. And then the two nozzles. Again, just hold them under the tap for a few seconds, let some water go through them. Done. Now, the next thing we need to do is obviously assemble our air still. So that way we can then go out and switch that on. Because we've already got the liquid in there. 
So. Take one of your glass collectors. Assemble that. It's a bit fiddly. There we go. And then put the pot. Another reef. Uh, yeah, the pot. So the one with the P. That's the one we want to assemble. And remember, don't use the spanner. Just do it finger tight. And that's it. Now let's take it outside. I want to switch it on. So find somewhere suitable to put it. Switch it on. And then press and hold for it to go to purple to re uh, pot still mode. The fan will kick in, and then the fan, uh, the, the hand fan pump will kick in, so will the fan for a few seconds. Now, if you get some very, very loud squealing noise, uh, that will be the pump, and it's because it's running dry. So, what you might need to do is open, uh, switch it off at the, the uh, plug, and then pour in some water. You're only talking about 15, 20 mil, and then plug it all back in again, and switch it back on. Um, a lot of these units run a bit too dry during the manufacturing process and testing so it they literally runs too dry and it'll be very very loud so you can just put a little bit of water in there and that will then solve that uh, and it will clear itself all right this has been two hours of running and it's still dripping nicely on occasions there we go so i'm going to switch this off and uh, let it cool for half an hour before i uh, cleaned it out so while you only need to leave this to the set for a, a short while, just to cool down a little bit, um, I've been a bit busy, so this is actually 24 hours later, so this is stone cold now. So what I can do is get the lid off. Now it might drip, so just be careful. I'm just gonna dump that into the sink. And I'm gonna reek of vinegar, move this out of the way. So the first thing I want to do is give this a bit of a rinse. So take the cap off and pour some water into the chamber here. And that's going to come out everywhere. It's going to come out the nozzle here. It's going to come out the center there. That's perfectly fine. Just keep an eye on the plug at the bottom and make sure it just doesn't go everywhere. Oh, and it's pouring out the side there as well. Nice. Just let it come out. Because obviously you've got all that vinegar in there. And tip it upside down. And again. It's going to come out everywhere. Let's do that once more. And try and angle it so not everything's getting soaked in water. And then tip it up. And then I'm going to empty the bottle out, the collection container. Is literally obviously everything's going to be soaked and it's going to be smelly. Of course. <clears throat> now I'm going to pour some just directly into the lid, and what that will do, do it at this angle, it's going to pour out the bottom. Once it fills up. No, it isn't pouring at the bottom. That's what it would do. Okay. And do the nozzle. Get this on one side. Give that a little bit of a, a rinse. Put this over here. And then take off the rubber ring. Or the lid seal. And then give that a little bit of a, a rinse and rubbing. And then the final thing, empty. Now, so because everything's going to be soaked, you're going to want to wipe this down and give it a good old wipe before you do the uh, next bit, which is the sacrificial run. Now, the reason why you need to do a sacrificial run 
And this is something that Still Spirits don't say to do, or you don't need to do in their, their guide, is the fact that um, there may be certain uh, materials that are left behind, like flux that has only been dissolvable by spirits. So while some may say it's not required, many people say it is required, so it is a good idea to do it. Right, I think that's uh, good enough, so I'm just going to assemble it all together and uh, then we'll do that run. Right, so for the next bit, I'm going to add in four litres of wash. Now this is a tomato paste wash. You probably don't need to do four litres, but in all honesty I do, simply because that way it does a full run. You all need to put a, um, your distilling conditioner in there. Um, all right. Or what I tend to do is I'll just use a knob of butter and then it's just something to break up the surface temp, the uh, surface to stop help with the um, bubbling and foaming. Let's get that lid on. Make sure you've got the pot still head on, or the nozzle on, you've got your collection container on, and then obviously go to the purple. Wait for everything to be tested. And obviously put a collection container under here, and then let it run completely. Now, because it's in pot still mode, it won't automatically stop itself. So collect 800 mil, 850 mil thereabouts, shut it down, let it cool, and then we'll rinse it out again. Right, well, I've got just over 800 mil poured out of here, so I'm going to switch that off, let it cool for a few hours, and then I'm going to clean it out. So this is done. What you must do is throw this away. Do not use it to slurt, uh, even if you're tempted to. Um, it could be tainted. So rinse this out as you did before on the sink, let it dry, and it's good to go. The question is, how often do you need to clean it? Now, most people should be doing it four to six times uh, after each use. Uh, after four to six uses, clean it out. Now, you don't need to do necessarily a full one like I've just, or we've done here. Um, but what I tend to do is every five washes, I will then clean all the padding, uh, packing out, uh, do it with the salt, water, and citric acid. And then I will then assess this. Um, Sometimes I'll do a small vinegar run rather than doing um, uh, the way exactly what we've done now. Other times I will do a full run, but it's more just checking the inside, looking inside there, having a bit of a smell, and, and, and is, does it smell clean or does it smell like it's got built up stuff inside there? And I'll, I'll assess it from there. Um, but you do need to clean it. I'd also recommend if you're not using it for a few weeks or a few months, taking the rubber ring out of the, uh, the head gasket and then putting that inside to store in that way. It's not always being stretched. But there you go. So I hope you found this informational and uh, see you next time. Bye.